Alright, so we never actually made it to autocross with the CRX. And the reasons for that is partially the last autocross event was cancelled due to rain. But also because we're having an issue with the radiator here. So let's get in and take a look. So the car hasn't been running for a while, so we won't really see any issues. But you can kind of see that it's puddling up right here, coolant on top of the radiator fan. And there's also maybe just a little bit that you can see kind of along here. So the issue is the CRX has been overheating. And what happens is that when you take these 30-year-old cars and you start to run them hard, what happens is this plastic piece will separate from the radiator below. And that usually causes this leak along here. So what we need to do is replace this radiator. And I'll show you how to do that today. In addition to replacing the radiator, it's one of those things It's probably a good idea to change the hoses as well. So we're taking off these hoses from the radiator, um, obviously because we have to get the radiator out of here. So we, we'll take this top hose off and then also this lower radiator hose. But it's a good idea while you're doing this to just replace those while you're at it. And then in addition to that, we'll come around to the back here. It's also just a good idea to put in a new thermostat since the system is going to be drained of coolant anyways. It's just one of those things, might as well just hit it while you're there. So first things first, we need to get the car jacked up and that will allow us to get underneath and start draining the radiator. Alright, so I've got the car off of the ground now, but you don't have to use jack stands in a jack if you don't want to. If you have ramps, those work perfectly well because we're not going to be doing anything with the wheels. So first things first with this now, we're going to be taking the radiator cap off. And you can see it says danger, but it's upside down. But the danger is that you never want to open the cap when the coolant is hot. So you want to make sure it's cooled down. And what happens is when the car is running, the coolant system becomes pressurized when the coolant is hot. So when you take off the cap and the coolant is hot, it'll cause the cap to blow off. And when it does, it'll take a bunch of scalding hot coolant with it and usually you end up getting burnt. So you want to make sure this is cold before you take it off. But we take this off because when we go to drain the coolant, it'll create a vacuum in the radiator so it'll prevent it from cooling in there. So before draining the coolant, one thing you want to do is set the temperature control all the way to hot. And what this does is it opens the heater core to the rest of the cooling system so that way the heater core will also drain through the radiator. Okay, so to drain the coolant from the radiator, what we do is we come underneath here, drain cock, you can see right there. So what I like to do is I like to put a box down with my catch pan on top of the box because if you put your pan on the floor, what happens is as the coolant's coming out, it kind of splashes all over the place. So to get it to drain, you can see there's this little adjustment here, and so we just have to get that going. Alright, so while the radiator is draining, what we can do is we come, can start with this upper radiator hose. So we have these two clamps on either side that have to come off. Then we can get this hose out of here, and then after that we can start working on the radiator fan and get that out of here. So what you have to do with these clamps, and they're kind of a pain, is you have to pinch them and then push them back. Let's try these channel locks maybe, that might be a little better. So you just pinch, and then while you're relieving that tension you slide it back. So once the clamps are off, what you need to do to remove the hose is you don't want to pull on it right away because it can damage anything plastic that it's connected to. So fortunately this is the metal block here and then this radiator is already busted. But to get around any issues, what you can do is with a pair of channel locks or needle nose or whatever, if you just grab a hold of the hose kind of squeeze it and twist, that'll break 
any bond between the hose and its mating surface. Once you do that, that's usually good enough that you can start to just pull it off from there. So while the remainder of the coolant is dripping out of here, what I'm going to do is remove these brackets for the radiator. So there's this bracket over here, and then this bracket, and then the radiator you can see sits inside of there. So let's get these off. Okay, so those bolts removed, these brackets just lift right off. Although you can see there's a clip on this one bracket for the overflow tank. So we'll just remove that guy there. We'll come over to here, take that off. And now the top of the radiator is free. You can see it has some wiggle room in there now. So next what we're going to be working on is removing the radiator fan, which is just these two bolts, and then the electrical connector down below. The difficulty is going to be, if your car has air conditioning, there's this hose that runs right here. So we have to try to get the radiator fan off of the radiator and kind of maneuver it around to clear this upper radiator hose. So that's going to be a bit of a pain. Now one thing you can do for increased safety is, since the car is cold, the radiator fan shouldn't turn on. But what you can do just in case is disconnect your negative terminal on the battery, which will keep the radiator fan from turning on if something happens with a sensor and it shorts together or whatever. So you can do, do that as an added safety measure, or there's just the electrical connector down below. You can kind of see the wires routing down here, but it's kind of hard to get to with the fan in place. The factory service manual doesn't say to disconnect the battery, but it's just a good idea, just increase safety if you feel like you want to take that step. Okay, so we need to try to finagle this thing out of here now. This hose has a little bit of play. I don't want to get too crazy with trying to move this hose, but it looks like we should be able to just lift it out with a little bit of maneuvering. So the radiator fan down below is just held in. It's got two little tabs that sit inside of the radiator. So it should just lift out with a little bit of manipulation here. The other thing is the radiator has two little posts that sit inside of the radiator support frame. But the only thing keeping it in place was those brackets up top. So if you need to, you can lift on the radiator a little bit. It's going to be difficult with the lower radiator hose still in there to get it to move too much but it's an option if you need a little bit of movement in there. This fan, you can see, has that housing in there for the motor, but that's not clearing the air conditioner here, or the air conditioning line. So, might have to just work on that for a little bit. Okay, so I have it mostly free now. What's holding it in place is the wire down below. So you can see it's this little green connector here that's holding it in place so we have to get this to come off of here so we'll just pry up on that tab I'll have to set you down but you just pull up on this tab and then pull them apart hopefully it's that easy okay so we got the wire disconnected finally and what I did is I used a little bit of penetrating oil just to help break up some of that grease in there so, now we can lift it out most of the way. But for cars with air conditioning, there's the secondary fan, which means that there's this wire clipped in here to the primary fan. So we have to disconnect this little clip so we can get the fan out of here completely. Okay, so with that fan out, what we'll do is we'll disconnect this overflow tank hose and then from there we'll just have to figure out how to get this radiator fan out of here these clamps work well it's just they're an enormous pain to get out especially this one which is kind of 
bottom of the engine bay here, it's really no good way to get to it. Okay, so with these two bolts out of here, and this wire mostly free, I think what we should be able to do is lift this fan out of here. And once we do that, we can kind of set it off to the side because it's a relatively thin profile fan. So I think we should just be able to kind of tuck it off to the side a little bit and then get the radiator out of here. So there's this bracket here that kind of tucks under the lip of the radiator and then goes up to here. So we'll pull that out. Once we pull that out, that should help free the radiator and also free up the fan. Okay, so to help get the air conditioning fan out of here, there's this little connector that runs between the fan and the compressor over here. So it's just this little guy here. So when you separate those, that gives the fan a little bit of wiggle room to move over and get out of the way. So there's this bracket that runs along the fan. So this tab sits inside of the radiator and then this bracket has these clips along the side that clip onto the edge of the radiator. So you have to get those off the side of the radiator and then the fan lifted up and then kind of move the whole thing over. So since we're replacing the radiator, it kind of chews up the old one a little bit if you're not careful. So when we go to put the new one in, we just have to be careful not to repeat the same mistake. But now with that fan out of the way, the lower radiator hose and the other fan, this should just lift straight out of here. Okay, it drips a lot more than I thought. Okay, so in the spirit of replacing the hoses while I'm in here, I'm gonna get the lower radiator hose now. And in this camera view, it seems like it's kind of buried in there, which it is to an extent, but it's a lot more obvious in real life. Um, here, let me pick you up and show you. So it's just this hose runs from down there, kind of up and right into there. So it's easy to identify. It's just with the camera angles, it's a little hard to see in here. So the clutch cable is just a little bit in the way here. Okay, just to help out a little bit, I just removed the clutch cable from its bracket right here. I don't know why I can't get the angle on it. But I removed it from the bracket. That should give it just a little bit of play to get out of the way of the hose down here. So hopefully I can get my wrench on it now. There, we finally got it. Of course, now it doesn't want to slip off of there. There we go. So one thing you might consider doing is removing the intake out, which will help to get to that hose. So it's just this clamp up here, and then the clamp here for the PCV system. And then if you have a stock box, um, there's kind of like a little spring clip here that you have to remove to kind of separate that portion. Okay, so the intake out of here, we have a lot more room to work with, which helps. And then we just have to get this to break free. Okay, so that was our lower radiator hose. And now the thermostat lives inside of here. So it's these two bolts, which remove the thermostat, and then you just take the old one out, put your new one in with new gaskets, and then get those bolts back in there. I think I forgot to buy one, and so I think I'm just gonna leave it as is for today, but if you're doing this job on your own, I uh, highly recommend doing that. Again, really simple procedures, those two bolts take off this housing, probably um, get this distributor harness out of here, it's just this clip, just kind of move it out of the way to give yourself a little bit of room. And then 
just put it in, make sure to use new gaskets. So one note is the battery can kind of be in the way, so it makes getting to the hose, the lower radiator hose, just a little bit more difficult. But I have this lightweight battery in here, which makes things a lot easier to work around since it's just so small. So if you're doing this job, you might consider taking the battery out just to give yourself a little bit more room. You don't have to, but it might help if you're doing this job yourself. Before you get this far, you need to put the uh, clamps on from the old hose under your new hose. So let's get this back out of here and do that now. Okay, so we'll get the new hose into position. So we'll just kind of fish it down through here for now. So before we're getting too carried away with getting the hose into position, just kind of check to make sure that when you put the clamps on that they're mildly accessible. So I can tell this clamp, for example, when I get it onto the flange, that it's going to be pointing down and pretty much impossible to access. So I just want to spin this around just really quick so that way it's somewhere I can reach and then we'll get that on there. Okay, so we'll just push it on to the fitting there. Just have to kind of wiggle it on and apply pressure until you get it butted up against the flange there. There's that little lip on the fitting that need to clear, so we need to get this on the other side of that lip. We want it to seat here so it seals. So you just kind of have to work with it for a little bit until you eventually get it into position. Okay, so I've got the new radiator laying up top here, somewhere I can access it. So one quick note is, if you have an automatic, on the bottom of the radiator there's going to be these two prongs. Well, there's going to be these two prongs regardless. So if you have an automatic, there's these fittings that you have to install on here. And during installation, you would have seen these fittings and you would have had to take the hoses off. So that's the automatic transmission cooler. So if you have an automatic, you have to deal with that, but being a manual, I don't have to worry about that, so just something to consider. So notice that the kit came with these little brackets here, or these little clips, or whatever you want to call them. So these are going to go onto here, um, not there, but these are what the bolts thread into. So we're just going to have to put this into place. I think once I get this in the engine bay is when I'll install these, that way I'm not trying to hold the radiator in place. So when you lower it in, these are the small tabs I was talking about earlier. So these fit inside of these small brackets down here. So you just need to make sure those align and you also need to make sure that the hose is pointing backwards. So that's really what you're looking for and when you're lowering it down into the engine bay you just want to be really careful that you don't bend these fins because that's where the cooling comes from all right so now let's get our lower radiator hose into position we'll get that connected up and then we'll try to get our fans dropped into here Something to watch out for is this lower radiator clamp. If the clamp is sticking straight up, the radiator fan won't be able to get into position for the top of the fan to line up. So you just want to make sure you get that off to the side. We need to get our AC fan back in here. So again, we just need to be really careful when getting the fan into here to not damage any of the fins. You can see down below that's the slot that the tab on the fan slides into and just don't forget to put your wire back on there. So what worked pretty well 
is sliding this bracket down along the side so that way I wasn't trying to move them across the face of the radiator but before getting any further with this I forgot to put in those tabs so let's get those into here Yeah, kind of want to eyeball and make sure you don't push it down too far such that it doesn't pass all the way through you just want to make sure that you can access that bolt all right, so a really quick note is that the tabs the radiator shipped with are way too long. And so I wasn't able to get the fan into position because this was blocking the bracket. So I just had to go to the old radiator and pull these off and recycle those tabs. So that way I can actually get the fan into here. All right, so one last detail is we just want to drain the overflow tank. So with the hose still disconnected, if you just kind of work it back and forth, it'll come out. It's just held on to that tab back there. So we'll just drain this old fluid and then get it back in there. At this point, we got the fans both in here. And you just kind of want to go through and check all the small details. It's like the lower radiator hose you want to get into this clip. And then your overflow tank you want to get into its clip here. The bracket's reinstalled your bolts for the fans in place, your zip ties trimmed. That's not supposed to be there. So at this point, we'll fill the radiator with coolant. So we're gonna keep the temperature control on hot so that the heater core also fills up. So we're gonna fill this radiator up. And then you also want to fill the overflow tank up to the line. And we're gonna be using 50-50 mix pre-concentrated or pre-mixed you can use your own mix and you can mix up to 60 percent is what honda calls out or you can just buy the pre-mixed stuff it's kind of up to you so let's get some radiator fluid in here okay so i got the, uh, the car lowered now so what we need to do is just finish topping off with coolant but before we do that we want to undo this screw here so this is the bleeder screw and since the cooling system is an airtight system this allows the air to get out of the system so we're just going to open this screw and continue to add coolant until coolant comes out of here without any bubbles next what we're going to do is now that we filled it up until coolant came out of the bleeder screw we're going to turn on the car and we're just going to let it warm up until the radiator fan kicks on twice so when the fan comes on, that tells us that the coolant has reached a sufficient temperature that the thermostat is open, so we just want the coolant to circulate throughout the system, fill everything inside, and we'll just continue to add fluid as necessary. So I see a lot of videos where people have these fancy caps that have funnels attached to them, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to top off by hand. So my assistant will start the engine now. So the thing with this procedure is the radiator is actually somewhat large for this engine and just how much power it takes. So it, it'll take a little bit of waiting for the engine to actually get warm enough. Oh, sorry, I had to transition to my phone. So it'll take a while for the engine to get hot enough to actually trigger the fan. So you'll just have to kind of wait it out. In the meantime, what you can do is with the old coolant, you can put it into a resealable container. So generally it takes so much coolant to fill this thing up that you'll use the whole bottle of new coolant. So that's usually a good thing. You can just pour the old coolant into the new bottle since it'll mostly be empty. And then that way you can take it somewhere to be recycled and not have to deal with the environmental consequences because coolant has ethylene glycol, which is toxic. So if you leave it out, animals can get into it because it's, the other thing about ethylene glycol is it's also very sweet. So animals like to get into it. So just it's the best thing to properly recycle it. But once your engine gets the temperature and you're certain that you're topped off to the bottom of the filler neck and your fan is kicked on, sorry, I went out of focus. 
At that point, we can put a new radiator cap on. It's a good idea to use a new radiator cap to seal the pressurized system. But we'll get the new cap on, and then at that point, you should be good to go. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. See you again.